Hey, what's up everybody? Rich Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, we're gonna jump in and test out the Super Console, which I just picked up off of Amazon. This is a retro video game plug and play setup, which advertises over 45,000 retro video games. So we're going to unbox this, we're gonna set it up, and we're also gonna dive in, take a full tour to see exactly what is included on here. And then we'll dive in and do a performance test by jumping into a handful of games from a bunch of different collections. So let's dive in and check it out. All right, guys, here we've got our retro video game super console here, plug and play setup with over 45,000 retro video games pre-installed and ready to go on here. So we're going to go ahead and start unboxing this. Let's see if we can get this open. It does seem to be packaged up really nicely. So we've got a user manual, and this is the Hyperbase A1 it's saying in here. If we open this up, it looks like we do get some pictures to go along with each of the setup steps in here it does seem to be really well outlined for us so we've got our settings outline setup process goes over everything that is included in here as well and looks like some product features on the back so go ahead and set that aside we've got a little manual for our game pads here and here a receiver do they both have a receiver they do okay so we have one receiver in here for each of the controllers. So I'm gonna take that out and this runs on AAA batteries. I gotta see if I have AAA batteries on hand. I believe I probably do somewhere. So I'm gonna set these aside. I'm only gonna be using one right now. So I'll set the box aside altogether. And let's bring over what I assume is the console within here. Where do we open this at? How do we get in here? All right, so it opens on the end. Looked like it would be a flip top there. Okay, so we've got a remote control right here, HDMI cable, power supply cable, and here is our actual console. So this says A95X on here. Go ahead and take that off. Looks like your typical TV box, very lightweight, very small. We're talking about what, four and a half, five inches altogether. We've got a micro SD card over here, regular USB and USB 3 port, but we have a micro SD card. I wanna see the capacity on here. So this is the 256 gigabyte version. So we'll go ahead, you can see that just simply slides in there and you just press it in and it clicks into place. So we have some ventilation at the bottom. Um, backside has our HDMI port, our DC in for our power supply. We have an ethernet connection over here. And we also have down here our um, audio connection. So if we wanted to plug a headphone right in here, we certainly could. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set everything up and we're going to fire this up. I'm gonna actually connect everything over to my uh, capture card so you can see exactly what I see as this loads in. And we do have a little switch on here, which is cool to see for the power supply. So we can actually turn everything on right from this switch on here. So you simply plug this into your outlet and you can cut the power to the actual console again by just simply flipping that switch. So I'm gonna set everything up and I'm probably not even gonna bother with the remote in all honesty. We can do everything with the controller here. And since we'll be doing the gameplay demo uh, anyways, might as well just go that route as opposed to the remote over here. So let's set everything up and dive in. All right guys, so we got everything set up, ready to go. I just wanna show you guys the connections here real quick. We've got the power supply connection right here, HDMI connection right here, and then I've just got my USB dongle for this controller plugged into the USB 3 port on the side of the console. So we're gonna jump in and we're gonna tour what this has to offer here. And first and foremost, you can see we are on the all games page right here. That's the landing page once we boot this up. And we see that we have 45,971 games in total on this setup. So that's a massive amount of titles. Now I've been reviewing stuff like this for a really long time. And what I'm gonna be looking for is uh, we wanna make sure that there's not a ton of duplicates in here. And some duplicates are inevitable. You have a lot of titles that were released for different collections. So something that maybe was released for um, Super Nintendo may have also been released for Genesis and maybe even released on the um, classic arcade. So it might be in the MAME collection. So duplicates like that are perfectly fine. But if we have like 10 of the same title in the exact same collection, then that is just padding this number. So 
you know, I've been doing this a long time. I know that we see that a whole hell of a lot. So we're going to be on the lookout for that. But we also want to see, of course, what is included in here. So I'm going to go through the collections, just scrolling through. We'll jump into a few of them to see what the layout looks like. So we'll just go into the all games list here. Um, it looks like the B button is going to be our button to actually load into things. There we go. So this is the layout within. And you can see... We go left or right to make our selections and everything's in alphabetical order. So we're going off of box art here, which you know isn't necessarily my favorite because stuff like this, you only see the title of it when it goes across the top up there. Otherwise, you're kind of straining to see, you know, what the box art there, you know, actually says. So stuff like this, which is foreign, uh, foreign to me anyways. You know, I, I really don't know what that is at all until I go up to the top. So just, you know, I'm nitpicking right now, but that's, you know, what I'm supposed to do right here. Uh, so all in all, does seem to offer quite a lot in here. A lot of 007 games I'm seeing. A whole lot, honestly. Um, let's see. And there are some duplicates, but I believe they're for different collections. So we're going to back out, and this is going to throw me off. I'm used to it being the opposite here. Backing out is the A button on the controller. Uh, favorite games, that's going to be a custom collection that you set up yourself. You can add all your favorite titles directly into this for easy access. We have CPC 464 here. So again, very similar layout within here. All box art. And then, of course, everything populates into the top. So we do get a little background image at the top. We get the title, and we also get a description of each title as well. So it is nicely put together. I wouldn't say that it's, you know, exactly how I would do it, but, um, you know, certainly is laid out nicely. Uh, Amstrad here, we've got 25 games. And how many do we have in here? We had, I'm going to wait for it to populate in, 2,917 games. Uh, we have arcade games here. And we also have MAME, so these are separated. How many arcade games do we have? 11 games, so not a whole lot there by any means. Let's see what they are. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, Final Fight, Knights of the Round, um, Metal Slug 2, Street Fighter Alpha, a couple Street Fighters here, Teenage Mutant Turtles, um, Turtles in Time. That's an awesome collection, or excuse me, an awesome game, rather. So we got some good stuff in here, and certainly no duplicates, because this is a tiny little collection. Uh, but let's go into MAME, which I'm imagining is over 1,000. Okay, wow, 2,116. So let's see what we've got in here. Right off the bat, I see one of my favorite games, 2 on 2 Open Ice Challenge. Love that title. Looks like a lot of good stuff in here. It is tough though, like look at this one. You have no idea what that is until you land on it. So it is tough when you're scrolling, you really have to go off at the top of your screen. The bottom really doesn't bring much to the table other than, yeah, it's cool to see the box art, but you cr can't really make your selections off of it. I'm not seeing duplicates, at least at this point, we're only in the A title still, but we'll see we'll get a better idea as to, you know, duplicates and all that stuff in the home console collections. But everything's looking pretty good here. Um, let's see. And with that number, I would imagine we do have a lot of great stuff. So we're in B, can we do a shortcut here? Let me see, select, oh, awesome. So if you hit select on your gamepad, you can go to, it says, jump to game beginning with the letter. And right now we're in B. So if I wanted to go in and check out, uh, I want to see if WWF WrestleFest is on here. So I want to go to the W titles. We just select W on here and we hit our B button. And that's going to jump us all the way to W. So it just saves a lot of time. And we probably could have gone to um, X and then worked our way up since WWF would be all the way at the end of this list. Try to jump ahead, went too far, of course. There we go, there it is, WrestleFest. So we've got some awesome selections on here and we'll jump into this game later when we jump into the demo portion. So let's back out and we'll continue on. We've got Atari 2600 with 594 games, Atari 800 with 
2,670 games. We also have Atari 5200 with 95 games, Atari ST with 854 games, Atari 7800, 65 games, Atari Lynx with 82 games, Wonder Swan, 114 games, Wonder Swan Color, 91 games. And we have the Capcom systems here. So Capcom 1, 2, and 3, 25 games. This should be like 30 something. Yeah, 31 games. And this one's going to be much less. And five games there. So that looks to be good. We, we also have over here 146 games. Over here we have 174 games. Commodore 64. How many do we have here? 6,549 games. Okay, massive amount there. We have Amiga with 2,621 games. We'll take a look inside Amiga. This is a collection I've recently got into, um, not super recently, but I would say in the last two years, I've gotten into this collection, you know, much more than I ever was before. So just scrolling through here, and again, I'm looking for duplicate titles. And these look like duplicates, but they're not. They're different Dungeons and Dragon games. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty well put together. All right, so we'll back out. We have over here, how many titles? 28 games, Odyssey 2, 113. In television, we've got 149, MSX. We've got 540, MSX 2 we've got. 518, Vectrex we have, 46 games. MSU 1, 13 games. PC Engine, 296 games. PC Engine CD-ROM, two games. Super Graphics, five games. Turbo Graphics, 16. 98 games. Turbo Graphics CD, 56 games. PCFX, 50 games. Game & Watch, 59 games. Family Computer System here, 1,697. Nintendo Entertainment System, 1878. So that is a massive amount for Nintendo Entertainment System. Let's dive in here and take a quick peek. So we've got 720 degrees, classic skateboarding there, Nightmare on Elm Street over here, and I'm not seeing, so far anyways, a ton of duplicates, which is good. These look similar, but they're the sequels following the original. And we may have some hacks in here. I'm just looking at, of course, the... Um, so there's different versions of Aladdin. Just looking at the total number there, and it definitely seems higher than what we usually see in here. So we might have some hacks. Not sure at this point. Alright, so, so far so good. We'll back out. Nintendo, oh, here we go. Alright, so this answers the previous question there. Nintendo Entertainment System hacks, 340 hacks. So they've kept the hacks separate, which is good. I hate when they actually include them in the main uh, collection, just because for the purists out there that don't want to stumble across a hack, because sometimes the hacks look very much the same as the originals. It just kind of makes for a messy setup. So I like that they separated it. Again, NES hacks, 340. Here we have disc, uh, Family Computer Disk System, 209 games. Nintendo Game Boy, 1,175 games. So that seems like a lot as well uh, for original Game Boy. I could be wrong on that one. It just seems like usually we don't have... Okay, so they have international titles as well. So usually I'm looking at just US, which would be probably about half as many. So they have, again, the like Japanese releases as well. So that's pretty cool. I mean, if you're looking for that stuff, I'm, I personally wouldn't be. But if you are, 
they seem to have a lot of it on here. So it's looking, looking real good here. I'm looking at the Batman titles, no duplicates over there. So, so far so good here. Uh, Battletoads, just the sequels in there. All right, so we'll back out of this. Continuing on, we have Super Famicom with 1,953 titles. Super Nintendo with 755 titles. Super Nintendo Hacks, 64 games in there. Let's take a look at what the hacks look like in here. I want to see if they're well polished off. We do have box art on here, which is good. And you can see some of these look, you know, very much like the originals here. Like this one here is Donkey Kong Country. It's a hack though. But I believe the box art there looks to be original. So some of them definitely look like they've been edited. Some of them look original. So like right here, we have Super Mario Kart 8, but for Super Nintendo. So we're combining, obviously, a newer Mario Kart release with a older throwback style. So we'll back out of this, continue on. We have Virtual Boy here with 33 games. Here we have N64, 461 games. We got to jump in here because N64 is, of course, one of the most popular collections for emulation. So what do we have here? We've got some great titles, looks like some international titles as well. Uh, and you can definitely tell the difference even in the box art across the bottom. Now, N64's box art was always very clear, whereas like MAME or you know classic arcade box art is obviously going to be harder to read. So we do see the logos on here very well pronounced. So it does make this a lot easier to choose from just the box art on the bottom. So uh, looks like we might have a duplicate here. Yep, that is definitely, well, no. Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. Batman of the Future Return of the Joker. Um, okay, so it's not exactly the same. Looked like it there. We'll continue on. I just want to kind of get a idea as to what is offered here. And it looks very much complete. Uh, all, at least all of the popular games. We've got all the cruising games, which I'm a massive fan of. We've got Cyber Tiger here. I imagine we have all the Mario ones and all. There we go. We've got Diddy Kong Racing. We've got Donkey Kong 64, Doom 64. So all those super popular games, Excite Bike 64, Formula One games, Gauntlet Legends, my all-time favorite game. We've got a lot of great stuff here. GoldenEye, 007, of course. Let's jump ahead, though. Indiana Jones. Let's see if we've got the Mario games in here. So we want to obviously make sure that we have uh, Mario Kart 64, which I can't imagine they don't have in here. Mario Golf. There we go. Mario Golf, Mario Kart 64, Mario Party games are all here. Mario Tennis is here. So lots of great stuff. I'm confident that all our favorite titles for N64 will be present on here. So we'll back out. And again, 461 for N64. Game Boy Color, what do we have here? 1046, Game Boy Advance, we have, should be like one, oh wow, 1811. And I imagine we're gonna have some, let's see. We're gonna have some foreign releases here. Looks like some. Looks really good though. We're very well polished. Is this a duplicate? Nope. Slightly different. Well, is it? Sometimes it's hard to tell off of the box art. Could be like a slightly different version, but we may have some. Yeah, these look like duplicates here. Yeah, definitely a duplicate there. So there is some duplicates thrown in here. This one and this one are duplicates. And they're probably just adding it in there twice because there's two games in one. But, you know, obviously it does pad the numbers a little bit. But all in all, so far, we haven't seen a lot of duplicates for these collections. So it's, it's looking good. Nintendo Game Boy Advance hacks. Two games there. So not nothing massive. Pokemon Mini, 43 games. Nintendo DS, 1650. So that's a lot of DS games. Let's take a quick peek in here. And I've never been big into DS. And I've said that a lot here on the channel. I know a lot of people are, especially with emulation. I just never got into it. It wasn't a uh, system that I ever had until more recently I've gotten one. 
but um, just wasn't a massive fan. So it looks like we've got some foreign releases in here as well. So we'll back out. Over here, definitely a popular collection, 39 games, Open Bore. Got to check out Open Bore if you're not familiar with that. Just two games here, so it gets you started. They're not including a whole hell of a lot, but awesome um, side-to-side -side beat -em up style games. A Thomas Wave, we've got 26 titles, SG-1000. 99 games over here. Sega Master System, 442 games, Mega Drive. 381 games, Genesis, 920 games, Genesis Hacks, 115 games, Sega Game Gear, 406 games, Sega Game Gear Hacks, which is cool, 25 games. I don't think I've done anything with Game Gear Hacks before. Uh, Mega Drive, 1,206 games. And now with Sega, you're going to get some stuff that crosses over from collection to collection, like Mega Drive, Genesis, uh, definitely going to be some duplicates across both of those collections, but that's something that we do see, you know, often with setups like this. So now we have Sega 32X, 37 games there, Sega Mega CD, two games, Sega Saturn on here, which I'm dying to test out because Sega Saturn is tough to emulate. 35 games there, so let's take a look inside here, see what's offered. So we have a backup there, um, which has obviously no, no box art or anything. Daytona USA, Die Hard Arcade, my, probably my favorite game right here for um, Sega Saturn. Lots of good stuff in here though. We've got the Virtual Cop games, Virtual Fighter 1 and 2, X-Men. So definitely some good stuff in here. We're gonna back out now. Sega Dreamcast, what do we have over here? Six games, so not a lot for Dreamcast. And that's unfortunate, that's one of my favorite collections. We'll see what is offered in here though. So we've got Marvel vs. Capcom 2, definitely a fan favorite. NBA 2K2, I actually have a copy of this game, about two feet in that direction right now. Awesome title. Power Stone, we've got Sonic Adventure 2, not the first one though, so it's kind of a weird assortment there. Uh, we don't have the first Marvel vs. Capcom in here either, so it gives us a little taste, I guess. A little flavor for Dreamcast, but, you know, still a lot to be desired here. We'll back out. Sega Naomi with how many games? 54 games. That's weird that that's got more than Dreamcast, just because Dreamcast is the more popular collection. Let's see what's offered in here, though. So you got Power Stone 1 and 2 in this one. I mean, they, there's definitely some good selection in here. Now, do we have... All right, we have House of the Dead 2. That's what I was wondering. But do we have WWF Royal Rumble? We have Virtua um, NBA, which is a great one. We've got Virtua Strikers in here. Wave Runner GPs in here. World Series 99 is in here. There we go. WWF Royal Rumble, my favorite for this collection. So, I mean, we definitely have a great selection. I wish there was more for Dreamcast, but that's all right. Uh, Sharp 68,647. What do we have over here? 70 games. We have 6,161 games here. Let's take a look. All right, looking good, we'll back out. Neo Geo CD, three games, regular Neo Geo, 151 games, so that's where you'll find all your Metal Slug titles. Neo Geo Pocket, 82 games, Neo Geo Pocket Color, 89 games. You have PlayStation, the original PlayStation, 
128 games here. We'll take a quick look through here. It's another one of my favorite collections. So we've got some more foreign releases. We've got the crash titles in here. We've got SmackDown, although it looks to be, uh, that's unfortunate that it's labeled exciting pro wrestling two and not, um, WWF SmackDown two. It's kind of weird just because if you're going in and you're searching for it, it's not going to come up. Obviously gauntlet legends, again, my favorite title. Not this wouldn't be my favorite version of it, though. I love it for Dreamcast and Arcade, not so much for N64 or um, PlayStation, just because graphically it's a bit challenged with those two versions. Um, got the Resident Evils in here, Ridge Racer, Revolution, Small Soul. Oh, wow, that takes me back. I never even knew there was a game for this, but that's an awesome movie. Bit of my childhood right there. Small Soldiers. Have to check that out. Never knew there was a video game. Uh, we've got Street Fighter. And are these the same? I believe they are. So there are some little duplicates thrown into the mix here. But, um, you know, not a, certainly not a ton. We've got Tekken 1 through 3. Time Crisis. Just one Time Crisis, though. The original. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 through 4. Twisted Metals in here. So there's a great selection for PS1. Oh, there we go. We have WWF SmackDown 2 over here. So there is a duplicate, and I guess that would be the Japanese version, maybe? The other one, the exciting wrestling one. So I, I guess I lied. There, You would be able to find WWF SmackDown 2 Know Your Role, which is a great title. One of my favorites for PS1. All right, so, oops, I'm jumping into it. We're not quite ready for the uh, gameplay portion of this. Almost there, though. But you can see as we jump in, uh, this is all in MULEC, and it's going to go into 4-3 aspect ratio with the side art bezels, which is cool. And you could obviously go in and change that. You can remove your decorations, which would take away those side bezels. Um, how do we get back out, though? Start and select is not activating our hotkey enable function on here. Maybe mode? No. Oh, press again to quit. Okay, so it's start and mode to exit games. Mode is your hotkey function. Um, as long as it's going to work here, is it going to show us? There we go. All right, so we're out. That's good. So continuing on, we have PSP here. How many titles? 15 games. And I see PSP minis is the next one over. I'm going to take a look at that, but I do want to double back to PSP. 289 games. I love that they have separated these because oftentimes we have a massive number for PSP. And you know right off the bat that it's going to have the mini games in there as well. And, you know, here, because they're separated, that shouldn't be the case. So let's go into PSP. Nothing against PSP minis, but I like that they're, you know, separated. So let's see what we have in here. Not a ton of titles, so we can go through everything. Metal Slugs are awesome. NBA 2K11. That's a good one. Ridge Racer is awesome. Yes, Sims 2, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Bomberman 94, Crazy Taxi. Good. So a good selection here. And we'll jump into at least one of these in the gameplay portion of this. So we'll back out. And we have Supervision over here. That should be our last collection with 66 games. So all in all, um, I don't love everything about the layout or design just because some of them are really hard to you know, look at. We don't have video previews or anything like that, which I don't, I'm not surprised by given the fact that we're running everything off of a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. But um, you know, I don't love that we have box art for everything just because it's hard to read like stuff like this. No idea what that is. If we just had logos, it would be a easier selection throughout, but that's me nitpicking. Let's jump out of this and let's see if the games perform well and, you know, make sure that everything does at least open up and all of that. So we'll jump into a handful of titles here from a wide range of different collections and uh, we'll see what we end up with.
All right, guys, so we just jumped into the Super Console, the retro video game plug and play setup here. And let's first talk about the actual game box, the actual console. It is high quality, uh, definitely falls in line with the price point here, north of 100 bucks, south of 150 bucks. And it comes with two USB wireless controllers. So they use the USB dongles. And on the actual console, the game box, there's two USB ports. So it uses up all of the available ports on here. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't get additional players. You would just have to go out and get a USB splitter. So something that plugs in and gives you additional ports from there. Uh, they're really inexpensive on Amazon. So with something like that, you'd be able to enjoy four players because um, there are a lot of titles in here that allow for four players. But with the actual setup the way it is, you would only be able to get up to two players on here. Now the controllers that are included, they're good starter controllers, but they're not high end by any means. So if you are somebody that's picky or somebody that wants to just improve upon your experience, you're likely going to want to upgrade these controllers. They're pretty decent. They don't have lags or delays in my experience. The buttons are pretty responsive, but they're just not high end. The analog sticks, are pretty crappy in all honesty. They're gonna get you through the games, but you saw in the racing games, I was all over the place on the road just because there's just a crappy feel to the analog sticks. You're not able to go exactly where you wanna go. You either go left all the way or right all the way. So you have to make these small flickering sort of adjustments to kind of turn slightly. There's just not a good feel to them. So, you know, it, they'll get you into the, your games, they'll get you started, but plan to upgrade if this is something that you enjoy and you get sucked into. And I think you probably will because there is a massive amount of games on here. Now let's talk about the games. We are advertised over 45,000 games on here. And I talked to you guys while we were doing the tour throughout the entire system here that a lot of times plug and play setups pad the game numbers and they go off of ROM files. That's how they actually count the titles but you end up with multiple ROM files a lot of the time. So it ends up with a lot of duplicates. It pads the numbers. You might have, you know, 30,000 games, but there's 45,000 ROM files. So they count the extra 15,000 as games when in fact, they're just duplicates. We didn't really experience that here. And I have to, you know, give them credit there. It is a pretty clean setup in that there are some duplicates, but they're few and far between. A lot of times the duplicates are just games that were released on multiple platforms. So you might have like a, T2 Judgment Day, for example, it was released for uh, Classic Arcade. So you have that version, you have the Super Nintendo version, and you have the Genesis version. So duplicates like that are totally fine, but we don't want to see like 10 versions of it for Genesis, 10 versions of it for Super Nintendo. That is certainly adding an excessive amount of games to our list that just, you know, don't pan out in the end. They're not actually, you know, giving us additional titles. So Let's talk about the setup in each collection. Now, I'm super picky with this stuff because I've set up a lot of builds like this myself. And I like to have logos when I'm scrolling through, even though, yes, it populates in each individual title's info on screen, but if it populates them in in a text form. So it can still be a challenge and time consuming to go in and see exactly what you're looking at every time. If you just have a scrolling logo for each title, it's very easy to pinpoint you know exactly what you're looking for, very easy to search for it. So, you know, 
it's a little bit tough here because there's box art for everything, which some box art is very distinct. You're able to tell exactly what it is, like Mario Kart 64 for N64. If we see that box art, we instantly know what it is. It's got the logo on there, very big and bold. It also has, you know, the characters, all that stuff. But a lot of times box art for like classic arcade games, it's not like that. It's not a bold and well-pronounced and readable title. It's usually a small title and a lot of graphics. So it's tough to kind of digest and really see exactly what you're looking at. So stuff like that, it's real nitpicky. That's what I'm here to do though. So, you know, I, I'm not crazy about the way everything is laid out on here, but it's not terrible in the end. It certainly gets you into games and the games do perform well. And that's the most important part of this is to see if what is advertised is truly what you're getting and if everything performs properly. And in my opinion, it does. We have some titles that do not perform very well, and we're going to talk about that briefly. So we saw that we have tons of game collections. You saw in the tour portion of this what you have for each one as well. So you can go through here slower if you want to and really get a feel for how many games for each collection exist on here. But Sega Saturn is a collection that unfortunately I was not able to test out. And I was super excited to dive in because as I loaded each of the games in, and I did actually try every single game on here, the games load in really nicely. I don't see any lags or delays on the intros, uh, no screen tearing, no audio cutouts, nothing that looks concerning. However, I could never get the controls to actually get recognized. So start wouldn't start the game. None of the buttons or button combinations would actually enter me into any portion of gameplay here. I went in, I tried to manually change the emulators. Uh, no luck there. Uh, I was able to change them, but I wasn't able to ever get the controls running. I tried to remap. I tried to do a bunch of different things to troubleshoot this, and I just had no luck. It doesn't mean that somebody else can't figure it out. I didn't spend a massive amount of time on this, but the average person is getting a plug and play setup because they don't want to do those extra steps or do any of the legwork with actually configuring and setting things up like this. So in that regard, I can't say much about Sega Saturn. I don't know if it works. It looked promising, but... The way that it stands right now, it's not plug and play like it's supposed to be. So I wasn't able to actually dive in and see what the uh, performance is like there. Now, Neo Geo surprisingly was very laggy. And I went into a bunch of different Neo Geo games, Metal Slug specifically, that's my favorite bunch of games for that particular collection. Everything was just really laggy, uh, really sluggish. I tried to make some adjustments, not that you should have to make adjustments with a plug and play setup, but Neo Geo just kind of fell flat for me which is strange because N64 was really phenomenal on here. Uh, PSP was a little sluggish as well. It wasn't a great experience for PSP, but for your retro game collections like your NES, your Super Nintendo, your Famicom, your um, Genesis, Master System, all that stuff, your classic arcade, your Capcoms, all that stuff performs extremely well. All the way up through PS1 was great. Uh, Dreamcast was very good. Sega Saturn, we really can't judge. We can't really say as to what the um, you know performance was like there because it didn't work with the controls, but it looked promising. Uh, what else? That's that's pretty much it. I mean, we've got all the game collections that are listed on here, with the exception of PSP and Sega Saturn and Neo Geo, that do work really well. So, at the end of the day, you just have to weigh out the pros and cons here. Are you looking for those collections that run extremely well? And if so, this is a great option for you. Or are you looking for Sega Saturn, Neo Geo, and PSP that leave a lot more left to be desired here? If you are, then this is definitely not the right setup for you. But at you know 125 bucks, give or take, prices do fluctuate. I think what it does offer and what the experience is like on those offerings is really good. So just weigh out the pros and cons. See if this is a good fit for you if you're in the market for a plug and play setup like this. Um, or if you're looking to take something like this and then customize it from there, that's certainly an option as well. You don't have to take everything as it comes and stick with it forever. You can customize stuff. Although if you do, I do recommend going in and at least backing up the micro SD card. That's where all your games and files are found. Just because when you start going in and customizing things, you do run the risk, especially with micro SD cards, of having a corruption. And if you do, you risk you know losing everything altogether. So I always recommend if you're going to customize anything, make sure that you back up your micro SD card. And if you do back it up, try to back it up to a Samsung or to a SanDisk uh, micro SD card. Those are the best ones available in my opinion. Um, but that's my take on this. Let me know what you guys thought of this super console here with an advertised 
uh, number of over 45,000 retro video games that are plug and play on here. So let me know what you guys thought. And if you enjoyed the video today, please give me a thumbs up on the video. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.